And Jay, could you explain in a sentence or so exactly who you are and what your connection is with the celebration? Well, I worked at uh, Stanford Research Institute, which is now SRI International, with Doug for many years. I was part of the ARC group, and he had a big project known as the NIC, the Network Information Center. And on the ARPANET, which was the forerunner of the internet, there were two big services. One was the NIC and one was the NOC. The NIC was the information center. The NOC was the operations center. So we ran the NIC. We distributed documents. We ran the naming service. We uh, had an 800 hotline, the sort of things that information center did. And uh, Doug was my mentor, and uh, he hired me in that group. And uh, I spent uh, many years as his being friends with him, and I miss him a lot. So, what was most uh, memorable can, about? Can, can I just ask for an amplification on that? Was that the forerunner of Internic? No, Internet. Right, right. The but, big one. <laughs> but Internic, the Internic operation in the early days of the Internet, was that descended from uh, the Nic? I'm not sure what the Internic was. It was a naming stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we were we were the naming authority for the whole network. Yeah, and then it went to uh, and then it started being operated by Dr. Postel. Uh, um, right. No, I worked together with John. Okay, so 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 what you're talking about is the predecessor of this. Yes. Oh, excellent. That's very important history. Thank you. And John ran John uh, ran the assigned numbers. We ran the host tables, and then he left. He was working at SRI then. This is John Postel and uh, John worked in Doug's group. And then when he left and went to ISI, he took the assigned numbers with him, which was a strange split because we had different funding agencies, but we always kept the whole mess in, in coordination. But the NIC, uh, my group, was the naming authority for the internet. What did you find most memorable about working with Doug? I thought he was a very good leader. He could make people angry, he could, you know, frustrate them, but he always seemed to get the best out of them. Somehow they wanted to do it better, bigger, you know, uh, uh, more inclusive. He just, he was very good at that, and uh, it was his gift. Did he always seem to have a clearer vision of just where he wanted to go? He did, but he, other people felt like they didn't get it, you know, and he felt they didn't get it because he saw something much bigger than they did. Now, did he have trouble communicating his vision? And if so, is it that the vision wasn't really clear or because the other people were lacking some understanding ability? Well, I, I think there's something that never gets talked about very much, but the machines were very small then, and so you had really creative people all wanting to do this or that or the other thing. And so there was all this contention about who got to put their thing in the system. It was just one system that Doug was building. And so that, I think, had a lot to do with contention or thinking that, you know, he wanted to go this way and he wanted to go that way. He actually had boffers out in the hall and it got, when it really got violent, he, Doug would send people out to take the boffers and their plastic boffers and bang it out till they got rid of some of their frustration. So there was a lot of problems because the, the hardware never caught up in, in those days with the software, in my opinion. You think that Doug's vision uh, is going to outlast him and become a, a mainstream thing that many people are working to make a reality. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, everything we're doing on computers today were kind of things that he did, as he would say, we did this 10 years ago and he was right. That was kind of a joke, you know, Doug always said we did this 10 years ago. So would you say he was pretty far ahead of his time? Oh, he was, yes, he definitely was. And it was, uh, SRI was a non-profit research organization, so we were con we did contract funding. And that was a very difficult situation or uh, environment in which to do what he was trying to do, because you always had to be, get the money coming in to do it. Uh, now that's true, too, at universities and, and research establishments that are funded, but it, it was very difficult to do that at SRI. Any time there was a funding hiatus, you know, you were hit with it, so. What do you think he'll be most remembered for? I think he'll be most remembered for how he taught people to uh, d 
do business, uh, to organize uh, information, organize themselves to get the best out of a group. His, his bootstrapping concept was very simple but very effective. How would you describe the bootstrapping concept? What is that concept? Well, you would build something. Well, first of all, you'd have an idea. Then you would see, let's let's make a prototype, or let's let's uh, implement a little bit of it, see if it's see if it'll go. Then let's implement a, a first approach, and then let's kick the tires. Everybody gets in there. It didn't matter who. They could say that doesn't work, that doesn't work, or I don't like that. And then you know, then you build another set based on all that input, and pretty soon you get something that's really, really valid. And the whole internet, that's the way they did business on the internet too. And a lot of those people got their concepts, I think, from Doug. Was he a good teacher? Could he explain things so people could easily follow? Some people, he was really good doing that, and other people, he never got to them and they would be angry about it, but then they'd try to do something better <laughs> just to show him, you know? And so he somehow got people to do the best they could do, whether it was a negative approach or a positive approach, and it was a gift he had. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add about Doug? Any memories or impressions about him? Well, he was a sweetheart. He was, uh, he cared about people, and uh, uh, he, when I first went there, well, it was in the 70s, so everybody was doing, you know, touchy-feely stuff, and uh, we did encounter groups and that sort of thing. And uh, so he had an interest in that, mainly because he thought it ca it helped people understand each other. So he, he was very interested in people uh, and how they worked, as well as machines and how they worked, and bringing the two together. Okay, any final last comments about him? Well, I'm going to miss him. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, I, would, I would like to say, uh, I didn't say it in, in the group, uh, I have a collection of 350 boxes of, of archives, uh, 50 or 60 are Doug's, uh, Doug's work, and the rest are the whole internet, the beginnings of the internet. I have given this to the Computer History Museum, which I didn't say, and I'm working with them, and we're trying to get this uh, so that everybody can see it and use it, and uh, right now it's, in, in, uh, it's been archived and, and uh, it's there, but we're trying to get it out into the world so the rest of the world can see it and use it. So I, w I want that to go on the record that it's, I'm working with them. I'm not doing this on my own. Okay, very good. It, Thank it, you very much. It, let me ask you, any, any clever little anecdotes that might be revealing about Doug that, that, that you could think of? Well, <laughs> I remember <coughs> one time we had a picnic and everybody was taking pictures at the picnic and there was a lot of sun so Doug was eating a sandwich but the sun was in his eyes so he was making this big grimace you know taking a bite out of the sandwich and somebody put the pictures on the wall and somebody came along and said I ate the sandwich 10 years ago so <laughs> that was Doug was always saying we did this 10 years ago so that was kind of a little but but he was he was uh, when he grew a beard at one point, everybody had beards, but D Doug did, and he grew a beard and came all the way down to here, and it was snow white, and he wasn't that old a man, and he was, I don't know, maybe in his 50s, but he had this snow white beard, and of course his name is Engelbart, which is German for angel's beard, <laughs> and that's exactly what it looked like, <laughs> like he had this, he looked like Santa Claus, so we all had a, got a laugh out of Doug's beard, but it didn't last very long, though. <laughs>